Our today's topic is macro evolution and the tree of life. And in which we will be discussing about the tree of life. So first of all, where does the idea of tree comes from? We know the tree is, you know, growing from the ground and it is in the form of a stem. When the stem comes up, it is dividing into branches. And same is the case in case of life. The life was devolved, uh, evolved from the one cell and it is, you know, evolving and making new and new organisms. And where a new species is formed, there is sort of branching happening. So this was the idea which was first proposed by the, by the Darwin. So Darwin was the first to picture evolution as a great branching tree. And on each branch, there is a particular species of an organism. So the branching is sort of also relative to each other. The two related organisms will be much closer on that tree than the two unrelated organisms. We will be much more closer on a branch to chimpanzee than a horse. That is sort of uh, the tree of life. It will tell us that how the whole tree of life is made. So which species of ape is closest to human? The gorilla or chimpanzee? So this is very, very small question. And we can do that, you know, for example, take some DNA from the gorilla and take some DNA from uh, the human and take some DNA from the chimp and see that whose DNA is much more related or much more conserved with the humans. The one which have less common DNA with the human will be less and uh, less related and the one which is having more common dna with the human will be more related with the humans so when we are you know uh, discussing one or two questions that is coming under microevolution but when we discuss that putting the together complete tree of all species that is coming under macroevolution and we study we are making the whole tree the or the scientist they are bound, they are very much interested in making the whole tree of life. So, uh, and we have discussed in the earlier lecture the concept of scala naturae. That means the natural, the ladder of life. Ladder goes from uh, lower to higher and simple to complex. But the tree of life splits and branches. So what, which idea is much more related to the life? The tree is the better analogy for the life. So there is a whole study in the systematics which is called cladistics. In cladistics we reconstruct the life's hierarchy and true patterns of relationship among the organism. As I have already discussed the human, chimpanzee and other organisms that how we are related to one organism more than the other organisms. And of course, when we are doing this, we are also studying the similarities and differences among the organism. And based on those, we are keeping those organisms close together or farther apart in the natural tree of life. So there are some characteristics which will tell that one organism is belonging to particular clad or particular branch. So these characteristics are called phylogenetically informative characteristics. So good characteristics are phylogenetically informative. For example, uh, wings. Wings are very much phylogenetically informative for the birds. If I say that these, these, these organisms are having feathers and have wings, you would already know that these are birds. So these are sort of uh, such characteristics which tell us that what are the organisms belonging to, to which branch an organism belongs to, if that has a particular characteristic. And these characteristics identify the clads. The, those organisms who have the wings will be in a similar clad, just like the birds. So phylogenetically uninformative characteristics uh, are those characteristics which does not 
tell us that if that organism is belonging to one clad or not. Uh, how? What are the types of it? There are two types or two categories of these. One is the conven uh, convergences and other one is the plesiomorphies. So again, these are the characters which does not tell if organism is belonging to a particular clad or not. These are just present and if they are present, might be possible that these are present in other organisms as well, just like we can see in the convergences. Convergences in evolution is when a feature or organism evolved to look the same, perhaps because they live the same way. For example, if I give you an example of uh, maybe a bat swing and a wing of a bird, that is an example of convergence. Their wings are not the same, but just because they are living the same way in the aerial environments, they have evolved the limb, uh, the wings differently from each other and that is called convergence. They are adapting the same characteristics uh, because just they are living in the same environment. So, and the next type of uh, characteristic are the plesiomorphies. Plesiomorphies are characteristics that are shared by the organisms of interest but also by the other groups. For example, if I talk about the wings, wings are shared by the all the birds, right? So if I want to identify a particular bird, for example, the parrots, I would not be able to identify that because the other birds also have wings. So that is plesiomorphies. Having the wings is an example of plesiomorphies. These are the characteristics which are not characteristics of parrots only. These are characteristics of birds. So, and then there are the monophyletic groups, right? So, as the name indicates, mono means the same. Phyletic means in the evolutionary history, they are belonging to only one parent. So, these are the groups that have a single origin and include all the descendant of that common ancestor. So, for example, Cetaceiformes, the parrots, long been identified as real and distinct from all other by the naturalists. So, if uh, what are the different uh, um, characteristics that make them parrots? The parrots are succinct uh, type of birds that have their own family and they do not uh, relate to any other birds in many forms. So, the next concept is plesiomorphies. The plesiomorphies are characteristics that are shared by the organisms of interest but also by the other groups. If you see this slide and if you see the plesiomorphy, there are two organisms which are originating from the same ancestor but still they are having a shared characteristic and that's why these are called plesiomorphic organisms or the organism which are sharing some characteristic and that characteristic is not related or confined to that organism. It might be shared by the other organisms as well. So, in the monophyletic groups are those groups that have a single origin and include all the descendant of that common ancestor. For example, uh, the parrots, the Cetaceiformes, have been long been identified as uh, real and distinct from all the, uh, by all the naturalist. These are the organisms which are having their family and that family does not relate to any other group of birds. They have some very succinct characteristics which are making them different from the other birds. And these are called monophyletic groups. Now there are some non-natural groups. These are paraphyletic groups. So for example, if we look at the reptiles. The reptiles are uh, also giving rise to the aves, that means birds and the mammals. So they are branching into other organisms as well. So they, they are paraphyletic groups. And also the polyphyletic groups, these are the organisms which have multiple regions. And we are not sure where to place them in the tree of life. So that's why we call them polyphyletic groups that means the poly means many and phyletic means the origins. So this was about the macro evolution and tree of life and we will be discussing about the 
tree of life or cladistics in the ne next lecture as well.